This is the Pangolin or Pendulum Wave music machine. I've produced building instructions for it and in this video I'm going to show you how to attach a glockenspiel uh, or xylophone and how to perform the final adjustments and this is going to involve some Lego parts that were not included in the instructions. The reason for doing that is that your glockenspiel may be different from mine so you're going to have to adjust these uh, attachment points a little bit but I'll show you what I've done and then you can adjust as necessary. So if we look on the underside the first thing is I have um, a bunch of these feet which I've made. So these are very simple, just five Technic parts. I hope you can see how they're constructed and it's important that um, it involves one of these Technic rubber bumper pieces and this acts to um, reduce the transmission of vibration to the table and reduce the noise and this extra axle is just to make it a little bit less squishy um, to rest on. And you may need to adjust the design of the feet because you have to get the height correct for your for the height of your glockenspiel. Um, and I also added a few extra strengthening struts on the underside which are not in the instructions. You don't need to do that if you don't want to. And in addition I have two attachment brackets for the glockenspiel. So um, once again obviously you'll need to design these appropriately for yours but here's what I have. Very simple design. That one goes over here. And this one is a different design, also very simple. That one goes over here. And the way I designed these brackets, they can actually fold away when they're not in use and then lock into place. And then hopefully the clock and spiel slots into place perfectly. So this is a 15 key 2 octave glockenspiel. So the next thing is the hammers. So as you can see each hammer is a slightly different shape so that they reach the appropriate keys um, and the design is pretty simple. Um, it's consists of Technic axles and uh, angle connectors and each one contains again one of these rubber bumper pieces and the purpose of that is to allow the key to sp the hammer to spring back off the key and let it resonate and at the end I have this arrangement with a ball joint piece and you're going to want to adjust the height of the ball so that the hammer rests just off the key. And of course different hammers have slightly different designs in order to reach the appropriate key and you just need to experiment with what's appropriate for your setup and it doesn't really matter whether the bumper piece comes before or after the angle connector as you can see here. So then it springs back and allows it to resonate. So now adjustment. So the goal here is that all the keys, all the hammers should strike at exactly the same time at one point in the cycle. And to achieve that we're going to have to adjust. So the first The first thing I did was try to make sure when I was building that all these Technic ball joints in the 40 tooth gears are aligned as closely as I can make them. But then for the final adjustments we're going to have to use the white clutch gears and the only way to do that is by trial and error. So it's best to do this with just two keys at a time. 
So with these two, if I turn the mechanism, then they strike very nearly at the same time, so that's good. If they didn't strike at the same time, then I would have to adjust one of them, and I do that by holding the eight tooth gear here, the small gear in place with my nail, and um, pushing the clutch gear one way or the other. It's a little bit tricky um, and requires some patience to do this. Um, but that's what you do, you make a small adjustment and then turn the mechanism back. When you turn it back, it's, it's always important to have all the hammers off, um, otherwise it's going to break something. And then try again, and when you turn it, when you're testing, turning forward, it's best to do it using the axle at the back here because that's how it's going to be driven by the motor and then see if they strike at the same time if not adjust again and then move on to the next one so turn it back and then let's compare this one which is always going to be my reference and the next one and try to get those striking in the same place and again that's pretty good and once again when you turn it back you, you can you can turn it using the 40 tooth gears but make sure all the hammers are off when you do that so at the end of the day hopefully all of them will strike more or less at the same time and then of course when you keep going next time around they'll strike in sequence and so on um, Everything is driven by uh, a Technic L motor. I, f I found that gives perfectly adequate power. Sorry, sorry, power functions L motor. That gives perfectly adequate power and about the right speed. So this, uh, this axle at the back is directly driven by an L motor. Um, in the instructions, I just mounted the L motor straight on the mechanism. In the earlier video, you might have noticed I actually had the motor on the end of a very very long axle like this so it's simply a bunch of universal joints and the purpose of that is to get the noise of the motor as far away as possible if you want to do some filming and you want to get the best sound that's helpful but for normal use it's perfectly adequate to put the motor um, on the machine and once again very, very important not to drive the mechanism in the wrong direction because if you do that it'll jam and maybe you'll twist an axle or at best you, you'll lose the adjustment um, so once you've found out what the correct direction is I recommend some arrangement like this with the battery box that prevents it being operated in the wrong direction Alright, so that's everything. I hope you enjoyed this model. Thank you for watching.